this is the this is the presentation session by sai krishna on digital and very log topics so this session is to improve the presentation skills of the students who registered to my course okay we are not to concentrating the technical content at this time so to improve the presentation skills we conducting this uh, presentation sessions okay all right okay sai krishna you can uh, start uh, yes sir yes yes i think my screen is visible sir yeah visible yeah. Uh, first of all good evening to everyone this is sai krishna and uh, um, I am a part. Uh, I am a student from uh, the NSA DV course of the first. And uh, as part of this course, presentation is one kind of assignment to every student. So, as part of this presentation today, I am going to present about behavioral modeling. And it is a question from the real world. Actually, let us jump into the introduction of. Behavioral modeling. But, um, uh, compete with any, uh, they need any software programming languages. We do have a certain uh, code code of conduct in order to uh, develop in any case. So that uh, one of them is very log, and uh, in very log we have different models in order to develop a code of uh, digital design circuit. So uh, one of them is behavioral modeling. Actually, uh, previous of this behavioral modeling, we do have two other modeling techniques. One is data flow and one is gate level modeling. Those are basic uh, modeling techniques in Verilog. And uh, why we have to choose behavioral modeling as the higher level of abstraction? Because it, it, uh, it has an advantage of uh, level of abstraction of behavioral modeling is more than the uh, gate level and data flow modeling techniques so that uh, we are choosing behavioral modeling and uh, uh, level of abstraction in the sense we have uh, uh, ability to uh, develop the complex digital circuits in a simple way in a simple manner uh, through this behavioral modeling and uh, in behavioral modeling uh, like this uh, modeling technique can be used in uh, hdl languages like verilog and system verilog you can uh, Use as per your uh, convenience, and as well as um, this type of uh, modeling focuses on behavior of the system. Uh, the name itself suggests behavior, right? So behavior of the system will be discussed, like focused more in this behavioral modeling. And uh, we are going to see what what uh, what it exactly contains and what uh, it exactly. So we have our presentation of my presentation for today is uh, this slide, uh, which you are visible that uh, procedural blocks. Also check audio, Sai Krishna. Sorry, sir, it is muted by. Okay, okay, okay. It was uh, Sai Krishna, any issue? Yeah. Audio uh, coming now. Yeah, you can continue. Okay, sir. Yeah, uh, as part of structured procedural block. So, uh, what do you mean exactly structured structured procedural block? In a sense, uh, uh, procedure uh, means in general uh, as a word of uh, science. Procedure in the sense a process, a process of something from the starting to the ending ending stage of something. 
so uh, as usual a procedural blocks in the sense block in the sense uh, a kind of thing which we, which uh, uh, what we can say which of the uh, ongoing thing so as the same way in uh, the log in behavioral modeling we have two different procedural blocks one is always and one is initial blocks and uh, those are used uh, in order to uh, develop the code in uh, developing a digital design circuit uh, i am willing to uh, explain about this uh, always and initial blocks using very low code which was a sample code which was presented by me so here uh, i think my file is visible to you Yeah, visible. Continue. Yes, sir. Uh, we can see that uh, I am. Uh, I had written some uh, piece of code regarding always and initial blocks in uh, GB editor, which was available in the source. So here, for like for uh, in order to implement what exactly always block uh, performs. Actually, uh, in general, all means. Uh, every time, like it uh, continuously, it will uh, go on uh, with uh, without any uh, pausing or termination. So in the same way, uh, in Verilog, we have always log which uh, executes or which simulates and which runs throughout the uh, time period which uh, we we mentioned in the uh, Verilog to uh, assign. explicitly uh, some some kind of system calls here comes the question what is the system calls system calls or system functions which are used uh, in verilog in order to perform various operations as part of them uh, dollar finish and dollar stop are two different kind of system calls which were used along with always block so here uh, in order to explain you uh, let a uh, let me uh, open model scene which was the tool in order to run very log codes and test uh, using the test bench actually uh, i wrote the uh, file itself style because uh, these, uh, these are kind uh, these are all examples which was i am explaining but in general uh, when we are using uh, design file separate and the test bench file separate we have to include uh, design file in the test bench file as well and we have to mention it in the run dot do file so that we can run the very log code and we can uh, obtain the executed uh, results so here we have have a module test bench tv uh, actually i named it the as tv because of uh, my convenience in order to uh, run all these kind of codes so it is about clock generation in the sense uh, <coughs> sorry uh, in this code i am explaining about uh, how the clock is generated and here we can see in the always log initially i have declared a, a clock variable which is a kind of register type and uh, here we can see uh, always log with uh, hash ten as the time delay clock equal to neg negative clock for every 10 nanosecond the clock will be inverted Uh, and uh, in order to monitor that, in order to display that, we I have used the dollar monitor as the system task. Uh, in order to display the time period and the clock uh, uh, visibility, how it is uh, going on. So here uh, I didn't use any dollar finish because I had uh, commented it in the comment lines. Uh, for the single comment line, I have used uh, two flashes. Uh, for example, if we want to comment for multi lines, we have to use in the in the place. Uh, slash star and star slash. Between that, uh, everything will be commented. Let me comment this as well. uh here in this the dollar monitor i gave time equal to percentile 0t and comma clock equal to percentile b because uh, i want to see how the time and clock will change according to the given input and here i used time equal to percentile 0t uh, zero because uh, in order to remove the gap which was uh, 
uh, which will come at the time of execution. Uh, in order to remove that, uh, we are using percent type zero t. Otherwise, we can use the percent type t as well. Uh, it's completely fine. Uh, let me save this file and uh, in order to execute, uh, we have to copy the path. And here, uh, I will show you the run dot do file. Yeah, here we can see we live work, we log cpt dot v, we can tb, add wave run, run, run dash, run space hyphen on. Actually, these are all commands. We live with the library uh, named as work, work library, which was uh, uh, there in this folder. Uh, and the ppt dot v is the file name, which we, with the dot v extension as well log file. tb is the test bench module name. And add wave star is used to represent the waveforms, which was uh, which was uh, displayed in the model scene pool and run space hyphen all is the, the command to run all the files which are uh, related to run dot do. So we are copied the path. So let me execute that. Here we can see uh, the commands for uh, executing in model scene are CD space, flower braces, uh, open flower braces and uh, copy, uh, paste the copy, pa copy path link and uh, close the flower braces. Then ls so that we can enable to visible the files which are under that path. We can uh, see that in run dot do ppt dot v uh, are the two files which we are uh, required to uh, execute this uh, file. And, uh, in order to run the file, uh, the command is do space run dot do if the file name is run. I had uh, named it as m run, so I gave do space m run dot do as the file name. Yeah, here we can see the transcript window. Uh, let me adjust the screen with code as well as uh, transcript window so that you can visible uh, see that. See that. Uh, in the uh, transcript window, the timer is uh, going on uh, uh, by executing. It is not stopping because we are, uh, did not use any kind of system task uh, that is uh, dollar finish or dollar stop, as I said earlier. So, in order to stop or halt the uh, uh, simulation or terminate the simulation, we have to use uh, system task for sure. Otherwise, this is the situation where the Simulation will go on infinity. We can't expect where it will stop because it has, we don't have any ending. That is the nature of this always block. Always in the sense it will run completely uh, uh, for infinity time. So let me uh, use this, uncommenting this dollar finish line with the hash uh, 100 time delay. So that we can now we are able to see uh, what is the exactly uh, change between uh, this dollar finish with always and uh, uh, without the dollar finish always block. Let me close this and then run again because transcript window is going on infinity, right? So Here we have the error in ppt.v near 13, 13th line. We have a hash, unexpected hash. Let us correct that. Uh, actually, uh, I will explain you this while uh, explaining about initial block. For now, I just let me run this. Yeah, you can see that the uh, user has gone. Uh, 
here uh, in the code we have used the dollar finish and system class so uh, the nature of dollar finish is usually terminate the uh, execution or terminate the simulation so that it is asking uh, whether you are uh, sure for terminate the uh, simulation or else you, you want to uh, stop the simulation it is asking for now we i'm giving as no because i uh, we want to see this transcription window the transcription window is not visible let us uh, the here we can see the same with and without system task in the always block see here that uh, simulation has stopped at 100 picosecond because i have given the time delay as 100 picosecond and uh, until then for every 10 picosecond the clock is inverted as i mentioned in the always block here uh, for every 10 picoseconds uh, it need to be inverted so for a time equal to 0 picosecond clock equal to 0 after 10 picoseconds clock equal to 1 and next for the next for next 10 10 seconds clock equal to 0 then next 10 seconds 10 seconds clock equal to uh, 1 so uh, it goes on up to 100 nano picoseconds uh, we stop the simulation because of always English. and it is all about uh, always clock always procedural block And then now we can go to finish block. Actually, uh, after always we have initial block. Initial in the sense starting stage of any uh, something, any kind of thing. Uh, so I. It will execute the uh, whatever the statements present in the uh, in that block of statements begin and end. Uh, it will execute statement the execution. As here uh, previously we got error in this uh, previous always uh, block uh, block code uh, code because of that uh, in between initial uh, we have two statements here. Uh, uh, dollar monitor and uh, dollar finish. Actually, uh, begin and end are the syntax for initial block. But uh, here, begin and end, we can we can uh, exempt them if we use only one statement in the initial block. If the statements are more than one, uh, like from two to upon infinity lines, infinity statements, we have to use begin and end in between the initial block. So that it will not throw any kind of error. As a in the initial block, I have gave that begin. Then I have in between the begin and end. If it is the one statement, we can we can use begin and end, or we cannot use. It will be fine. It will be run absolutely. But if the case is more than one statement. <laughs> we have to use begin and end in between the initial block. So here I took x and y as the register variables, and uh, I gave with uh, I have assigned x equal to zero and y equal to one as the values, uh, but with some time delay, as as ten picoseconds for x and as twenty five picoseconds for y, and on in initial block I have mentioned the scale which we are mentioned in the code. So after has 50 picoseconds the code will be terminated because I used dollar finish here. So uh, previously you have seen how dollar finish works. So let us uh, use another system task which will work similarly to dollar finish but there is a difference. Uh, between dollar finish and dollar stop, we can discuss later about this system task. But as of now, let me save this code and uh, let me rerun this code because we have the same file as usual. Yeah.
if you are running the same file after some changes in the file and uh, if you made any kind of changes in the code in the same file the tool will ask the reload and uh, it will ask and uh, like uh, an alert message that the file has changed file has altered so that uh, are you willing to run again this file uh, like it will uh, works as a caution to the user who is using the model stream so here we can see the execution of this uh, initial state block so if you can see in the transcript window at time equal to 0 picoseconds the values of x and y are x x in the sense in very log we have the x value which which will determine the unknown value the don't care value of the variable y it is giving as x for both x and y variables because at time 0 picoseconds we are not assigning any value to x and y because uh, here we can see it, uh, it has 10 picoseconds the time delay it, zero will be added. so and it has 25 picoseconds delay y equal to 1 billion. If we can see time equal to 10 picoseconds, uh, at that time x equal to 0 is assigned because uh, as we mentioned in the code, x equal to 0 will be assigned at hash 10 time picoseconds delay. And But y equal to x as it is because we are assigning value of uh, y equal to 1 at hash 25 picoseconds. So that uh, from 10 picoseconds to another 10 plus 25. 35 picoseconds. After 35 picoseconds, y value will be assigned as 1. So we can see a time equal to 35, x equal to 0, and y equal to 1. And uh, uh, here I use the dollar scope as a system task. Sai Krishna, one so adjust your audio. Sorry, sir. Audio, audio, one so adjust audio. It is coming, but it is coming low, little. Yeah, sir. Actually, uh, no, now only previously it is okay now only now it is audible, sir. yeah it is audible only yeah okay okay thank you for the confirmation sir. so here we can see uh in, by using dollar store uh while running the model sim tool it doesn't ask about are you sure you want to finish the execution as as or no because the nature of dollar stop is to stop the simulation like it, it pauses the simulation. It does not doesn't end the simulation. If we uh, use uh, continue as the command in the in this transcript window, it will continue the execution. But uh, as of now, we gave hash 50 picoseconds as the time delay for the stop. At time equal to 50 picoseconds, we have dollar stop as the system task which uh, terminates. Uh, sorry, which pauses or it stops the simulation of this initial block. Otherwise, uh, initial block, if we, uh, if we do not mention any kind of time delay, it executes for only once and then it will stop the simulation and it will result, it will uh, give the display results in the display transcript window. The display results also uh, will be displayed if we use only any kind of system tasks as dollar monitor or dollar display or dollar stroke. Other than that, if we, if we do not use them, we do not get any kind of display in this transcript window because we need to uh, tell the simulator, like we need to, we are uh, requiring, we are uh, like seeking some kind of dis uh, display variable so that it will display to us. So I think uh, you are clear with these uh, procedural blocks. Uh, do anyone have any doubts? Please interrupt me in between and you can ask. Um, it is all about procedural blocks under behavioral modeling. And later on, we have procedural assignments as our second objective. So, what is seen by procedural assignment? Uh, it is also similar. Uh, uh, the only thing changes here assignments. Assignment in the, sense, in the sense assigning something to someone or else something to something in general. But in very long language, we have uh, in the syntax, you, you can see in the screen 
uh, the expression which which is on the right hand side will be assigned to the left hand side in a procedural way like uh, so in, a, in the uh, sense uh, procedural assignment we have two different types of procedural assignments in Verilog. Those are blocking assignments and non-blocking assignments. So uh, what is non-blocking and blocking exactly mean? Here, um, theoretically, I am explaining a little bit, but uh, the whole thing, the entire agenda is to explain all the, uh, like all the nature of this blocking and non-blocking assignments. Here, we used equality operator in, in the sense equal to equal to operator is used to specify blocking assignments and less than or equal to you is used to specify the operation of non working assignments so uh, theoretically we do not know what exactly they will work so let us uh, check them with uh, along with the code so here we can see a small piece of code which which is uh, referring to the blocking statement, blocking assignment of this procedural assignments. So here, actually, uh, we can also explain in a simple way in order to explain you uh, by different uh, examples. I use this this code as an example in order to explain blocking assignments. So here, I have used register variables as x, y, z, and those variables are scalar kind of variables because uh, we have scalar and uh, vectors right from our childhood. Uh, I think you are uh, aware of what is scalar and vector, even though I will explain once again vector and scalar. Actually, uh, vector in the sense uh, more than one because here uh, if we can see uh, um, 15 down to 0, 15 subscript to 0 is used as a vector because it stores, it is a register variable which stores up to 16 bits. But scalar is a uh, variable, uh, register variable which stores only one bit of data. The X, Y, Z here are, will store only one bit of data and uh, register A and register B which are of 16 bits data and uh, those are called as vectors. So I think you are clear about this clear scalar and vector. And later on, I have used the count integer variable. And uh, yeah, I used this as integer. You, uh, you may know, you, can, you, you will come to know in the further lines of this code. So here I used initial block, initial procedural block in order to execute these uh, statements regarding to my convenience. And uh, these are all examples if we are uh, it, it doesn't mean you have to follow in this way only. You can change as your as per your convenience and as per the circuit design. According to that, we have to uh, alter or change our code so that uh, here we uh, in the initial block I used begin and end because we have different uh, multiple statements in this begin and end of initial procedural block. So first of all, in the 42nd line, if you can see. I have assigned x equal to 0, y equal to 1, z equal to 1. Uh, but I didn't mention any kind of time delay. Uh, time delay will be mentioned uh, with the uh, hash, right? So I didn't mention any kind of hash delay here. So what will the simulator take uh, at the time of 0 picoseconds? By default, by implicitly, the simulator of model sim will execute all these statements which are present in this initial block in a sequential manner. But with, we, here we have not mentioned any kind of time delay so that it will execute at time equal to 0 picoseconds uh, of all these uh, uh, not mentioned time delays. If you mention any kind of time delays be, uh, before the, or between the statements, we can uh, expect the, those statements to be executed at that time delay. But here uh, we did not mention any kind of time delay so that all these statements from 42nd to 45th line will execute at time equal to 0 picoseconds only. So here we have x equal to 0, y equal to 1, z equal to 1, and count equal to 0. 
and register a equal to 16 bits of 0 which are filled with 0 because it is uh, declared as a vector and uh, register b will be assigned as register a it means register a whatever the register a will be assigned that value will be assigned to the register b itself so next uh, in the 47th line if we can see has 15 is the time delay for register a here uh, I had mentioned register A in brackets, in square brackets too. What it exactly mean? Uh, initially, I uh, I already explained you about a vector. Here in, in the 38th line, you can see register A is the 16-bit variable, so 16-bit uh, vector. Vector. So uh, at the uh, second position here, 47th line, read J of 2, it implies at the second position of that vector, I am assigning the value uh, or I am changing the value to the one, whatever the value uh, previously, I don't bother about that, but it has 15 time delay. We have uh, we have to assign the value or we have to change the value at the position two of 16 bit register A variable with one. At the same time, it has 10 delay after this register A. We have altered, we have changed the register B variable with some uh, changes. We are going to see what about that. Here we, I have used register B in brackets 15 to 13. Uh, actually, it is, a, it is known as uh, a part of vector. It is not a complete vector because generally here, uh, Positioning of a vector will start from 0 to until how many uh, MSB which you are mentioned in the uh, declaring the variable. So here I didn't started with the 0 as the LSB because here I am uh, taking a part of that vector, slicing that vector into different uh, pieces. It means from position uh, 13 to 2, position 15. That means 13, 14, 15 positions will be altered from the right hand side expression to, to the left hand side expression in that vector. In the vector of register B, from the position 13 to from the position uh, until 15th position, the whatever the expressions or the values, the registers or nets which are uh, presented in the right hand side of that register B will be assigned to uh, uh, bits which are in the which are a position of 13th to 15th it has 10 time delay here uh, in the right hand side we can see in flower braces we have x y z variable actually what it means in general uh, in uh, verilog language we have these operators we we'll use this uh, sorry uh, not operators we use this symbol flower braces symbol in order to uh, explain the concatenation nature of the uh, variables or the data which present in, in between these uh, flower braces. Actually concatenation is another topic which, uh, which includes many changes in concatenation as well. If you uh, follow the different lectures, previous lectures of Dave Sirs in YouTube, you came to know that what is mean by concatenation in detail. So uh, we have different concatenation. This is the kind of concatenation as well. If you can see my cursor uh, in the 44th line, this is another type of uh, mentioning of concatenation. So uh, for now, we can see what is uh, this x, y, z concatenated. So here we are actually, we are altering from 13th to 15th to position. It means three bits we are altering. We are changing three bits of register B at time 10 seconds, time uh, 10 picoseconds. So, here we have x, y, z are scalars, means x, y, z are one bit uh, variables. Uh, those values will be assigned to uh, 13th, 14th, 15th bits of register B. It has 10 time delay. So I think you, uh, you get, got now like what, what exactly about this 49th statement. Okay. And uh, here in 51 line, I used integer variable as count. And uh, I gave it count equal to count plus one. Just I increased the count by one bit. Okay. So uh, let us uh, run this 
forward by saving this and we'll observe what what all the changes we are uh, making from these assignments i just saved the code and i'm going to run those things actually we are changed the code so that it is asking about reload this with the code by placing it one after the other so here we can see uh, okay a time equal to 0 picoseconds as i said earlier we are did i didn't mention any kind of time delay for execution of uh, lines 42 to 45 so the statements will execute at time equal to 0 picoseconds delay. So a time equal to 0 picoseconds, if we, if we can look into the transcript window, time equal to 0, x equal to 0, y equal to 1, z equal to 1, and count equal to 0, register A equal to 0, register B equal to 0, because uh, here, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, uh, x, y, z are scalar, uh, variables like I mean those are randit variables so that they are represented by only one bit. Then uh, count is uh, represented in 32 bits. Why? Because count is declared as an identifier which was uh, given an integer data type. The uh, nature of integer will uh, occupy 32 bits of the data so that whatever we are uh, assigning the value it will represent it, it in a 32 bit manner. In the same way, for register A and register B, we are mentioned the them as uh, vectors, uh, the 16 bit vectors. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, audible, continue. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. And, uh, we have uh, register A and register B are 16 bit variables, and we have assigned register A equal to 0 uh, initially at 44th line at time equal to 0 picosecond, zero picosecond uh, by default by the simulator because we didn't mention any kind of time delay. So that at time equal to 0, uh, register A and register B were also 0. Uh, 16 bit zeros because register B is also assigned with register A. Whatever register A will be assigned to the register B as well. So at time equal to hash 15 picoseconds delay, if we can see in the 47th line of the code, uh, register A, uh, vector register A at the position 2, we have 1. So uh, remaining all will be as it is at time equal to hash 15 delay. So x equal to one, 0, y equal to 1, z equal to 1, and count equal to 0 as well. In the register A, if we can see it in the second position, if we, uh, my cursor is blinking at that second position, you can uh, have a look at that. And uh, at position 2 uh, of the 16-bit vector, we have uh, 1 uh, is assigned at time equal to 15 picoseconds time delay. Okay? This is what about the uh, specifying the bits in between a vector like if we can alter or we can change any bits at any time in instant or uh, in a in a very low code it will be displayed in the transcript window very flexible in that case but in register b we did not uh, change any kind of alterations so it is it remains as it is at time equal to 15 picoseconds hash delay 
a time equal to 25 picoseconds why it came 25 because uh, here we in the 49th line we gave only 10 right so but why it is printing as time equal to 25 in the sense in the uh, initial block as i said earlier whatever the block of statements or the statement which are present in between begin and end will execute in a sequential manner it means a statement will execute one after the other and particularly in blocking assignment the thing is about blocking assignment blocking in general blocking means what uh, uh, stopping something uh, by uh, like we are not allowing uh, others to pass through or pass by in the same way blocking assignment uh, represents with an equality operator here x equal to 0 y equal to 1 count equal to 0 we are using equal to in order to assign rhs expression to lhs and uh, here, e here that equal to represents the blocking nature of this uh, code and while executing one statement the other statements will be blocked it means at a time for a while only one statement will be executed by using blocking statements it is speak to you of the procedural block which we are used so it has time uh, 10 delay 49 already we have completed has 15 time picoseconds then uh, from 15 to plus 10 it means 15 plus 10 25 picoseconds so at time equal to 25 picoseconds time delay x equal to 0 y equal to 1 z equal to 1 as it is but here if we can see count equal to count plus 1 without any time delay it means at the time equal to 25 picoseconds it will also be executed along with register b as well so count will be increased by only one bit so if we can see initially we have assigned the count equal to 0 as its value uh, because of uh, it is a integer data type it uses 32 bit of data uh, and uh, it represents in a 32 bit uh, vector kind of thing and a time equal to 25 picoseconds time delay count equal to increased by count plus 1 it means one bit increased if we can see here uh, we have count equal to 1 it is changed then register a equal to 2 as it is because we didn't uh, uh, assign any kind of changes at hash it, uh, 25 picoseconds and uh, coming to register b we have altered uh, where is that one minute okay. uh, here if we can see in the code from 13th position to 15th position the values of x y z i mean 0 1 and 1 will be assigned at that positions so i am maximizing the screen of this uh, transcript window here we can see as i mentioned earlier it is a 16 bit data right 16 to bit 16 bit vectors so right from lsb to msb we can see lsb here from 0 to 0 it means um, 16 bit of data in that uh, in that data only 13th 14th 15th positions we are altered by using concatenation Uh, method here in the code x equal to 0 will be assigned at 13th position y equal to 1 will be assigned at 14th position at 15th position z equal to 1 and uh, 16th position uh, is uh, as well uh, like is as it is okay and uh, yeah you can see the changes accordingly by using concatenation as well so it is all about blocking statement blocking assignment it means uh, here we can see that uh, one thing you have to keep in mind that uh, just uh, for as of now for next 15 minutes just think about this uh, time delay time equal to 0 15 and 25 picoseconds in blocking assignments now i am going to change this code by using non blocking assignments just i am assigning the equality operator as less than or equal to operator so that what changes we will get uh, we are going to see in any case if you have any kind of doubts or else uh, any other issues uh, as my boy, laptop voice is very low so i am not be able to hear please don't mind 
Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead, no problem. Sir? It's fine, it's fine. Go ahead, no problem. Okay, sir. So here we can see from line 61 to 82. It is the same code as previous one. But here if we can see the change in line 74 and 76. We have the time delays. I have mentioned in between. Uh, this is the intra delay, intra assignment delay, which will be extended uh, timing delay concepts in later videos. And for now, less than or equal to operator is used for non blocking assignment. As I said earlier, what exactly non blocking means? Non blocking is completely opposite to blocking assignment. It means while executing one statement, if it doesn't uh, stop, or if it doesn't uh, uh, block the other statements to execute. It means every statement we execute uh, concurrently in this non-blocking assignment. Okay, uh, I think uh, you are uh, aware of this code by previous explanation. So I'm not going to explain again about this code. Just I'm saving this code and I'm going to learn about this code. Okay. Then here we have yeah. So, uh, let us check with that. Yeah. Here we can see the same code. The execution will be same. The results are also same. But the thing is, we are used non blocking assignment instead of blocking assignments. So what it changes, like what the non-blocking, how it will be differs from blocking assignments, we can see here at uh, time equal to 0 picoseconds and 10 picoseconds and 15 picoseconds. Because we have altered them it accordingly in the non-blocking assignments. Let me explain you clearly. Uh, here, it, uh, without any time delays, at time equal to 0 picoseconds, these all will be updated like x equal to 0, y equal to 1, z equal to 1, count equal to 0, it is a 32-bit, uh, uh, what we can say, 32-bit uh, data, and uh, register A is a 16-bit vector, register, register B is also a 16-bit vector, okay? Here, at time equal to 0 picoseconds, we have count equal to 1, because as I said earlier, concurrent execution is happening in non-blocking assignment. So count equal to count to plus one as seven sixth line, which was executed previously after all the statements executed. So that at time equal to 25 picoseconds in blocking assignment, we have updated value as count equal to one. But here itself in uh, non-blocking assignment at time equal to zero picoseconds itself, we are getting the count value as one, okay? It means, irrespective of other statements, all statements will execute at the same time. It is the nature which was explained by the non-blocking assignment. So, uh, register A equal to 0 and register B is also 0 at time equal to 0 picoseconds. Because uh, we have, we, had, uh, we have, uh, like, we do not have any changes previously at time equal to 0 picoseconds. But it has 10 seconds, it has 10 picoseconds. If you can see, register B is altered. So, at 10 picoseconds, all the other variables will remain as it is, including register A, because register A 
altered will be changed with hashtag at 15 picoseconds time delay. So register B at a time equal to 10 picoseconds. Uh, we have the required changes. We can observe them. Okay. And uh, previously, uh, I did some mistake while explaining. Like uh, X, Y, Z will be assigned from MSB to LSB, not from LSB to MSB. So X value will be assigned at 15th position. If we can say B equal to 0, it means X equal to 0 will be assigned at 15th position of B. And at 14th position, Y equal to 1. And at 13th position, Z equal to 1. So the assignment, the way of assigning of this concatenation happens while the slicing of that vector from 15th position to 13th position, right? From MSB to LSB, it will assign the values from RHS to LHS. I think you are clear now. And uh, eco seconds time delay, uh, we have register A at a position to the value will be altered. So here, if we can see the required changes at time equal to 15 picoseconds as delay. So it is the usage of non-blocking assignment. It is the nature of this non-blocking assignment. But uh, here comes the question where we have to use blocking statements and non, uh, blocking assignments and non-blocking assignments. Initially, uh, if we study the digital electronics, we have two different kind of circuits. That means combinational and sequential circuits as well. For combinational circuits, we are uh, dealing with uh, them without clock, I think so. So those uh, com th the circuit which includes combinational property will uh, uh, suggest to use uh, blocking assignments. And for sequential circuits, it will be suggested to use non-blocking assignments because we are uh, dealing with clock and reset values so that for the synchronous nature and uh, for the uh, avoiding of these confusions of time delays, we have to use non-blocking assignments in sequential circuits. Uh, okay, and later on, we have odd objective as what is that uh, event based time timing control mechanism. Actually, uh, I had we need to explain them with different course, but uh, due to insufficiency of time, I uh, I am quitting at this time. But I'm just uh, I want to. Uh, Tell orally about these timing controls. In Verilog, under behavioral modeling, we have three different types of timing controls. In that, delay based timing control, event based, and level sensitive timing controls are three, three different uh, timing controls. In these timing controls as well, we have sub blocks, it means subtypes, regular delay timing control, infra assignment delay control, zero delay control. So, here we can see uh, in the blocking, uh, sorry, I will explain them from the previous course itself. You can see here in blocking, uh, hash 15 reg A of 2 equal to 1B, uh, 1B uh, like it is a statement which comes under regular timing control delay. It means before the statement uh, starting, we have to give the time delay. It refers to the regular timing control delay. And uh, here we can see in 72nd line, the hash 15 time delay is mentioned in between the statement. It means before the RHS value, it is given uh, the time delay. This refers to the info assignment timing control delay. Uh, I am, uh, are you clear with that? I am assuming you are clear that. Uh, and uh, for example, hash zero. If I mention in this way, it is termed as zero delay control. It is same as count equal to zero. Like these two statements will have same nature. But the thing is, it is based upon the same later. In model sum, it won't uh, show that. that uh, changes in the statements execution, but at higher level of uh, simulation or execution at industry level, we can observe the minute changes with time delay and with the hash zero time delay. 
it means has zero will assign the value from rhs to lhs at the moment where the time equal to zero picos picoseconds ended it means count equal to zero will assigned at the time equal to zero picoseconds uh, initially but regia to uh, 16 bits of zero will be assigned at the end of the time zero seconds it doesn't mean that it uh, will be assigned at the time equal to 1 picoseconds but there is a small uh, minute difference between without hash zero delay and with hash zero time delay that will be explained by this zero the time delay timing control and in the event based timing control like the event named event event or this will be explained in the further presentations and coming to conditional statements we have if if else if else if else and nested if these are four types of conditional statements uh these are also worked on the basic terminology in the basic uh, level of understanding what is mean by if it means if the if a condition satisfied then uh, the upcoming statements will be executed according to the condition is if the if it is true the statements will be executed else it will be false uh, nothing will be uh, changed by using only if if we use if and else uh, if the condition satisfied if the condition becomes true if statements will be executed else it means otherwise else statements will be executed in the same case if we have one or uh, like more than one conditions two or more conditions if else and else will be used in case of uh, different conditions of a same type it means if one condition is satisfied then we have to uh, satisfy another condition after the first condition is also satisfied it means condition within a condition it, in that case in that scenario we have to use nested if statement uh, theoretically up to here we are, i can explain so and we have conditional loops loops in the sense looping uh, block of statements under a certain condition while for repeat for the verb these are four main types of conditional loops uh, here while loop is a thing uh, it means um, we show you a code so that you may might be understood easily Uh, actually, I am not getting that. So, uh, like while loop means, uh, let me write over uh, type in this PPT itself in the PDF itself. Sorry. Here, if you can see while is a keyword so that it is uh, uh, it is highlighted. so here comes the condition for example i and 0 okay if the uh, condition uh, the va value of i uh, will be greater than 0 uh, at that time it will enter this loop which which are with uh, like it will execute the statement which are present in this begin and end it is about while loop if the condition fails it will not enter through this begin and end and it will con uh, continue simulating from line 12 to 54 it is the case with while but for for loop uh, we have it is also similar to while loop but in while loop, uh, in for loop the condition the syntax is uh, initialization semicolon increment or decrementation okay and begin and end okay so for loop is similar to while loop but it is not same 
because in for in while loop we have we don't have these three conditions these three terms initialization condition and incrementation for example i equal to 0 i greater than 10 i equal to is the scenario is the condition it means initialization in the sense i equal to we are assigning 0 initializing zero i so with uh, initially i will be assigned initialized with zero value and the loop must run until i value uh, becomes okay it means up to i equal to 9 the loop will be run and whenever the i equal to uh, 10 the loop will be terminated so uh, and i equal to i plus 1 i am incrementing i by uh, i plus 1 for every iteration For every uh, second iteration, or else I put two, or else I minus one, whatever it may be, incrementation or decrementation. Then suppose plus plus or minus minus, it will it may leads to error. But in system memory log, we can able to assign in this way as well. It is all about for loop. If the condition fails, it will come out of the loop and execute the remaining part of the code. But in case of repeat. it doesn't uh, act in that way repeat in the sense repeating a condition or a statement continuously until the it mentioned at time so we can see repeat is also a keyword and he did the syntax of repeat and it, i am mentioning as yet it means whatever the uh, statements between begin and end after this repeat block uh, it will repeat it will execute them for yet times okay that is the nature of this repeat uh, loop and it doesn't depend on any kind of conditions whatever the number integer number oh, sorry whatever the positive number which you have given gave in this uh, brackets itself it will execute that many number of times of that block of statement which are present between begin and end later on we have forever if we can see forever i have used uh, i think i didn't used okay if we see here instead of always if we can use forever it will also work similarly okay forever it means forever and ever it means until explicitly we have uh, we are stopping the uh, simulation until then forever for a uh, completely infinite times it will execute the uh, things which are in between begin and end as well it doesn't require any kind of conditions as repeat uh, loop so it is the difference between repeat and forever repeat is for a uh, limited number of times which we are mentioned in the brackets but forever is uh, unlimited undefined and an infinite time In the same way, while and for loop will uh, based on the conditions, it will execute. If the condition fails, the simulation won't will be, won't terminate, but simulation will pass to the next statement. And uh, we have sequential blocks and parallel blocks. It is already explained by me earlier of this code. It means um, whatever the code which are outside of initial and always blocks will be treated as parallel blocks. It means uh, they will be executed concurrently or parallelly okay but the statement which are present in between initial and uh, initial uh, or always blocks they will be ex uh, executed as sequential manner if the case comes to blocking and non blocking the scenario will be different as you uh, previously you are uh, looking to that transcript window so i think i am done from my set this is So today's presentation about behavioral modeling. And okay. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to explain uh, about this behavioral modeling from this. Okay. Thank Very you, good, Sai Krishna. Your presentation is really good. Uh, you explained so many codes and you almost covered so many things uh, related to behavioral coding. Okay. And. Uh, coming to job opportunities so generally there can be two opportunities you already mentioned you have good interest in teaching so 
you have very good teaching skills so you explain like a teacher not a student uh, you have very good fluency and presentation skills and uh, ppt making skills everything is good so in future i wish uh, definitely you will get multiple job opportunities you can go as a trainer uh, and you can go as a dv engineer so you have multiple job opportunities definitely you will become succeed okay now right okay sir uh, this means a lot uh, thank you for your words yeah definitely yeah okay some other time i will give you uh, when we have time i will give you chance to explain some uh, system very log topic also because today we covered digital very log related so some other time i will give you chance to present some system very log also okay na uh, okay sir and uh, one more doubt like uh, did yeah. i make any mistake in this presentation any yeah mistake? that's no issue here my our main intention is uh, to give a chance to present some topic and to improve your presentation skills at this time we are not much focusing on uh, any technical content okay? Uh, okay but only one point i will give suppose generally we use non blocking in the sequential and blocking in the combinational so this is the most widely used question so the main uh, the reason is suppose if we take regions that uh, blocking is executing in the active region but if we take non blocking right hand side part is executing in the active but the left hand side executing in the non blocking region okay if we apply the same nature to the continuous and discrete so that too, blocking is executing at a time right hand side part evaluation and updating happening so that nature is uh, uh, looking like a continuous nature and that's why we code combination circuits with the blocking but when we take uh, non blocking right hand side part evaluation happening at one time and updating or assigning value to the left hand side is another time so it is looking like a discrete nature so that's why we use non blocking in the sequence okay yeah remaining the everything okay no worries about the technical content so here we got a chance to present one topic so because of this presentation you prepared a ppt you worked out on some codes you prepared a theory so it became a practice to you practice to you it is uh, improving your presentation skills so in that sense we connected this session okay don't worry about technical and uh, i can say strongly uh, technically also you are very good in coding wise okay right okay sir thank you yeah